Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the first episode in which the Hokage and the ANBU commander observe Naruto's use of shadow clones that night. The commander recruits the newly graduated Naruto for his forces by guilt-tripping the Hokage. Join Naruto as he becomes Team Ro's fourth member and discover what this means for Naruto's plot. This story is from Theraku260, please support her. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Commander Dragon whistled. Damn, that's talent. He was impressed, after watching the whole scene between Naruto and the traitor dragon couldn't help but imagine having that in his forces. The kid could outrun and outprank his men since he was ten, and the young Jinchuriki was known to be stealthy even in orange, perfect for ANBU. And after creating hundreds of clones like nothing, Dragon knew his services would be invaluable. Pity he was so young, the Hokage would be near impossible to convince. Yes, his chakra capacity is huge and with his solid henge, a shape shift, really, he has more potential than any of the graduates. Sarutobi chuckled and lit his pipe. Dragon whipped his head up. Impossible. Shape shifting, as in not an illusion? He drooled slightly when the Hokage nodded, and knew right then. Screw the age, shape shifting took huge reserves, and even then, only a few bloodline holders seemed to be able to use it. It was probably the fox, and as such, had unlimited uses if Naruto could figure out how to transfer his abilities to become animals or even objects. I want him, dragon clipped. The Hokage and the ANBU guards gaped at him, wondering if their commander was finally losing it. Sarutobi quickly squashed the idea. Absolutely not. He's a genin now, according to Irika's headband on him, and thus can become ANBU. Hokage-sama, surely you see how much latent talent he has? And those academy reports show he should have graduated three years ago? Dragon smirked at the slight wince on his boss's face. Sarutobi had called upon Naruto's file after he failed that afternoon, needless to say he was pissed at the revelation that the boy should have graduated at nine, not fail three times. Contrary to popular belief failing the ninjutsu portion didn't stop one from becoming a genin, you had to fail three sections. Apparently Mizuki and other teachers would intentionally alter the tests before Irika saw yet were stupid enough to keep the originals in the file cabinets. Nobody had ever asked for the orphan's real file, and thus his scores reported a moron. If Naruto hadn't stolen the scroll he would have been given an honorary graduation in the morning. Sarutobi knew he failed the boy greatly but letting him in the darkness of their world so early was not something he should allow, no matter the talent. He just made the rank, though. Naruto will be placed under Kakashi. I'm sure he will learn plenty there and you can recruit him in a few years he said with a voice of steel. Normal men would let it drop, Dragon was not normal. He faked his death for his village, changed his fighting style in many ways for the ruse. He once faced ten IWA Chunin and Jonin with three kunai and barely any chakra, he still hasn't spent their bounties completely. Dragon knew not what backing down meant not when it came to the village's safety. Kakashi is inept in teaching and life at the moment. His teammate will no doubt be the Uchiha, who we both know is a flight risk. Having our Jinchuriki make bonds with a potential traitor is foolish. Sarutobi faltered. Good. Just a little more. Also, being an ANBU who only answer to the Hokage would protect him should anything ever happen to you. And let's be honest. Keeping Naruto away from public eye for several years could finally let their hatred die down. When he leaves he will be given whatever rank he deserves. What Dragon didn't say was that a few years would hopefully be at least ten, he viewed this as a sort of long-term investment. Why train three ANBU that would leave within a couple of years due to stress or wanting something else in their career when you can mold one amazing ANBU and have them for over a decade? It worked with Tenzo who was still in the forces without showing a sign of burnout. Of course, Dragon wouldn't tell his leader that, 
nor would he mention that he planned for the kid to become captain level within two years, Sarutobi didn't take too kindly to rushing a ninja's training, but Naruto's ability with shadow clones just begged to be abused. Very well. I will consent to this for a time. What squad do you suggest? Sarutobi sighed. He sensed it was for the best, for all parties involved, especially the boy he failed dash, and maybe the squad he was assigned would turn Naruto into a fantastic shinobi. I think Ro would be best, Tenzo can train him into the ground, help him with the fox, and give him some manners. That, or kill him for his boisterous personality. Huh, maybe this isn't a good idea? Nah, your genius knows no bounds, dragon. Almost another hour passed of the two men smoothing out details such as living arrangements and strategies to improve Naruto's diet. Dragon was in the middle of suggesting, in a joking way, of course. For the most part, shock therapy to loosen the addiction when the door opens and his new subordinate walks in with the scroll, the bright orange lighting up the night. Not even Dragon was sure how he was so slippery in that outfit, but imagining his skill in proper clothes sent shivers down his spine. He put his game face on, not that anyone could see. Time to tell the kid the good news. Who didn't want to be ANBU? Thirty minutes later. And after Irika sensei gave me his headband I dropped Mizuki off at the ANBU guard station and took Irika sensei to the hospital and came here. Naruto said, ignoring the commander with practiced ease, used to Gigi having a sentry even during private talks. He felt sickened with himself, his own stupidity led to his teacher staying in the hospital overnight. The looks of disgust from the nurses when he handed over his favorite man seemed justified for once, he had to get stronger, to make sure it didn't happen again. The Hokage seat seemed hollow at this point, if he couldn't protect one person, how could he be the shield of the whole village? Well, well, I'm glad you took the news of your tenant quite well, seeing Naruto's major look of. Betrayal the Hokage winced but continued, and I want to talk about your graduation. I didn't pass. Naruto was panicking inside. The only reason he didn't pass years ago was the stupid clone jutsu. He knew the jutsu now, or at least a variation, so what was the problem? How was he supposed to protect his precious people, however few they were, if he had to repeat another year at the academy? Oh, you pass, Naruto. Don't worry about that. It's just. Sarutobi faltered in his resolve, considering changing his mind. He really didn't feel right about this. Fortunately, or unfortunately, the Hokage wasn't sure yet, his most trusted ninja had no fears and instead seemed giddy. Like a child with a new toy. I hope Naruto survives his fascination. I wonder how Naruto will deal with Dragon's seemingly personal aversion to him eating ramen constantly. Originally you would have been assigned to a team with Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Kakashi Hitaki. However, putting you under a regular genin squad would be a mistake, both because of your abilities and the security risk of having two high-target genin on the same team. As a result, you won't be in the normal forces, at least for a while. You're under my command, kid. Welcome to ANBU. The truth was stretched a bit but Naruto bought it, if a bit flabbergasted. He recognized the ANBU as Dragon, the top ANBU. Gulping a bit, he nodded weakly. Why am I a high target? He asked. Sasuke was an Uchiha and the last one at that, of course he'd be important. But Naruto? No one wanted him here, why would it be different anywhere else? You're a Jinchuriki, a person who holds a tailed beast. That makes you an asset to Kanoha, here Dragon brushed off his leader's K.I. The kid need the truth, not lies like the Hokage thought was best for them. It's a sad fact, but the truth. In times of war enemy villages will try to take you out first, and missions you are sent on could be sabotaged to either kidnap or kill you. To fix this, having you in ANBU lets you be invisible while you train to become strong enough for these threats. His voice was blunt, but Naruto found he rather liked that. His, Gigi, lied to him his entire life, 
every time he asked about why he was hated or spit on the Hokage would let slip sweet lies to placate him. This guy, though speaking things he'd rather not hear, being viewed as a trump card and primary target wasn't pleasant, was honest. Naruto found it amusing that other villagers desired him more than anyone here save a few, but chopped it up to wanting the fox, not him. What Commander Dragon should have said, Naruto, is that the shadows are safer for a few years. It is my fault for not ensuring you received proper training from your first day at the academy like the other Jinchuriki do. In ANBU I am able to fix my mistake. If you wish to leave the forces after you become Jonin level, then at that time you can. Sarutobi smiled at his surrogate grandson. That smile fell when. Naruto bowed a bit stiffly. Understood, Hokage-sama. I am ready for my first post. Naruto wasn't sure how he felt at the Hokage, but he knew the leader screwed him over. From the sounds of things he should have been trained or at least told of his burden, not kept in the dark. Normally he would just brush the incident under the rug but this time his mouth wouldn't let the easy forgiveness come out. Sarutobi knew he screwed up, losing Naruto's affectionate nickname coupled with the barely held contempt means he lost his respect and trust. Besides being a personal issue, the Jinchuriki had to stay loyal to the reigning Hokage to keep political power in check, he had to gain his trust back. I'll make it up to you, Naruto. I promise. Dragon seemed pleased by Naruto's acceptance. If the kid refused or threw a fit he would have been hard-pressed to have the Hokage's backing. From his files Naruto wouldn't have done so, but the possibility was always there. Come with me, Naruto. The men are ready for the bonfire. He rubbed his hands together. Something they've wanted to do for years was finally coming to pass. Every ANBU assigned to Orange Duty had fantasies about what was about to happen. Naruto blinked at the comment and dark chuckles from around him. Be bonfire? He squeaked. They couldn't mean that, could they? Of your jumpsuits. Don't worry, you'll be issued enough uniforms and off-duty clothes at HQ. Nu was heard all through the village as Naruto's cries of anguish echoed. Umbu HQ, Naruto gulped as he followed Dragon through the dark hallways that smelled faintly of blood. At the quartermaster Naruto had signed his life away in blood, promising at least seven years unless debilitating injuries or specific recommendations from the Hokage. He looked at the uniform given to him, a size extra small ANBU gear set, in his arms, the mask looking up at him. It was supposed to be a mouse, its red whisker marks and black nose marking staring up at him, but the features were too vague in his opinion. Naruto's nerves were on high alert still. He was even too nervous to care much about the obvious jab to his height and immaturity. Soon they reached the locker rooms. Locker 123 is yours, mouse. You can change and bring your kindling, or old clothes, out to the communal area, two doors on the right. Tonight you can sleep in the dorm and tomorrow before team practice your captain will find you an apartment in the ANBU complex. ANBU complex? Naruto quirked an eyebrow. He never could find where the ANBU lived or else he would have pranked them. Then again, maybe that's why I didn't know. Yes, the complex. It's a series of apartment buildings that only ANBU and approved Jonin can live in. Nobody will question you staying there or vandalize your lodgings. Oh, and I have no say in what you do in your free time, but I feel the need to remind you that pranking high-level ninjas when you live next door could be considered a hazard to your health. Dragon replied smoothly. Somehow Naruto could tell the man enjoyed messing with his head. All right. I'll keep that in mind, Dragon-sama. He said with the right suffix on the way to HQ Naruto attempted a nickname and found out what flying 30 feet felt like. Then Naruto processed what he heard. There goes his epic plans for off-duty mischief. Glad to hear you agree. Now, put on your uniform, masks are to be worn on duty at all times outside the base, but you can leave it on your belt in HQ. What about you? Naruto asked. 
They were in HQ but Dragon still wore his thick cloak and mask. I'm the commander, Mouse, I'm never off duty, and my identity is an S-class secret even from my subordinates. With that his new leader walked stiffly out, signaling the end of discussion. Ten minutes later Naruto walked into the common room, mask clipped to his belt, idly rubbing his ANBU tattoo. Inside forty on and off duty ANBU were gathered around his piles of clothes. Snacks were passed around and cameras were out at the ready. Everything looked oddly normal, considering these were the elite. And I'm one of them, even if I don't deserve to be. Yet. But soon, I'll prove I can be useful. A man with a faceplate headband and fish eyes spotted him from a circle of chattering agents. He beckons Naruto over. Welcome, Naruto, mask name Mouse. I am your captain, Tenzo. On missions you will call me Tiger. These are your teammates, Yugao mask name Cat and Hikaru mask name Wolf. The now identified Tenzo was formal and seemed to demand respect. Naruto, still not feeling back to normal after his revelation that he wasn't a kick ass ninja yet, responded in a very un Naruto like way. Thank you, Captain. I am sorry if my lack of skills causes you trouble. Naruto attempted his best respectful voice, knowing the childishness wouldn't be appreciated. The others with Tenzo were slightly shocked by the quiet and polite reply. The Naruto they all knew from childhood pranks would have shouted something along the lines of how awesome he was and dreamed to be Hokage, not apologize for his obvious weakness. Hikaru, known as one of the avid supporters of Naruto's epic escapades and personality, decides his new teammate needed to lighten up or become a mini Kakashi. He flips his long brown hair, giving his new kohai a light Hyuga smirk. Oi. Chibi, what's a squirt like you doing on Team Ro? Honestly Hikaru was looking forward to having the blonde as his squad mate, he himself was an avid joke enthusiast not on the clock, of course. He felt that Naruto just needed a nudge after all that happened, Mizuki had already had many visitors, after news spread of his attempts to kill Naruto. Naruto grew a tick mark. Who you calling a chibi? And I'll have you know I'll be kicking your ass one of these days. And just like that the dam broke and the old Naruto shined through, if only a bit more subdued and weary from the betrayal. It was as if a slight weight lifted off his shoulders as he defended his height and abilities. Humph, I'll believe it when I see it. Now throw your jumpsuit in the fire and let's start the party. Hikaru drags Naruto over to a contained fire pit. Naruto pales at the prospect of getting rid of his sweets. It's not that he loved the color orange above all others, he preferred red in all honesty or that he liked jumpsuits they were hard to maneuver in, but they served a purpose, if he could out-stealthy elite and paint the Hokage mountain in that, he could do it in anything, and it became a part of him, a way to not be ignored by villagers. But, Naruto had a feeling the ANBU in the room would force him to burn them if he refused, and he had no delusions of beating dozens of elites. After a quick moment of contemplation Naruto steeled himself and tossed the suit into the flames, determination in his eyes. That was my childhood. Now, I'm a new me, an ANBU recruit. I'll become strong enough to keep tonight from repeating or ending in a body bag for someone. Cheers echoed through the room and a hand pounded on his back. A lizard ANBU gave him a noogie, and Hikaru tried to stuff a rice ball down his throat. Before the night waned and he passed out into a creaky dorm bed, ANBU had already become a better home than Naruto's old one. Next day. Naruto stared at his new quarters, his three boxes of stuff already stacked neatly in the corner. With break-ins common due to the location of Naruto's apartment in the Red Light District it never seemed wise to keep too much stuff around. He dropped the duffel bag carrying the three extra uniform sets and six off-duty outfits and BU pants, long black or green sleeved shirts on the new brown couch. Looking around he couldn't see why this apartment was half the cost of the others. It was small. It was plain. It was perfect. Naruto had a wide grin, giddy despite himself. Yada. 
This is amazing. Look at this couch so firm. And this window, no drafts. The kitchen, working appliances. And the bedroom, so comfy. He ran from spot to spot like a chicken who lost its head. Captain Tenzo shook his head at his newest recruit's enthusiasm, but brushed it off as Naruto never having stuff half this nice. Yugao chuckled. And Hikaru? Well, he joined in. This carpet is so soft. And the chairs are comfy. He bounded around just as much as Naruto did. Yugao face palmed at the two youngest members' antics. Hikaru. Naruto's apartment is exactly like yours. There is no reason for you to act like a caffeine high toddler. She honestly didn't understand how Hikaru made ANBU despite his abilities at both Taijutsu and Ninjutsu, he was too carefree. Naruto was an exception, he was young, and both Yugao and Tenzo had plans to beat him into a respectable member of Team Ro. They had a reputation to take back. They used to be the top squad until Itachi defected and Kakashi left, damaging their image. Of course, as she observed Hikaru taunting Naruto from the ceiling and basking in the blonde's odd expression, Yugao had to wonder if it was already too late for a complete makeover. Hey, Yugao-senpai. Naruto's voice cut through her musings. Who are my neighbors? He knew Yugao lived across from him. Hikaru lived to her left, and Captain Tenzo had a larger apartment to her right. The new ninja never had neighbors before and the thought excited him to no end. Until he saw his entire squad wince. Hee <laughs> hee. See, there's a reason this apartment is so cheap. Tenzo started. Kakashi's fine, he's on your right and stays quiet as a mouse. But to your right. Yugao trailed off as she hugged herself. Is a monster so horrible it made a single word become outlawed, Hikaru's voice called from the ceiling. They shuddered together, and Naruto scoffed. He couldn't be that bad. I'll bet you guys are just trying to scare me. Wosh. I hear I have a youthful new neighbor to bask in the springtime of youth with. A boisterous voice appears in Naruto's doorway accompanied by the most horrible sight imaginable, a green spandex alien. The alien gave a thumbs up and made his teeth sparkle. I am the extremely youthful Mado guy, Kanoha's youthful green beast. Welcome youthful friend. It is most youthful to be an ANBU so young. Naruto paled as the creature grabbed his hand in a handshake that swung him around the room. It was then Naruto noticed none of his new comrades were in sight. Traitors, do the bonds we built mean nothing? In their respective apartments his teammates each sent a silent prayer of apologies to their youngest new friend. You Uzumaki Naruto, nice to meet you. He managed out between poundings into the floor. Guy would have continued but an aloof drawl stopped him. Ma, ma, Guy. Don't kill our neighbor before I meet him, the voice was accompanied by a cyclops reading the same orange book Naruto saw Hokagejiji read. The man's eye widened and narrowed when he spotted Naruto in his ANBU gear. Great, another hater. He thought glumly. Naruto wasn't aware but Kakashi was narrowing his eye at the fact his secret little brother figure and supposed future student was in a high-security ranking apartment wearing the black ops gear, his tattoo still fresh. Whoever put him into ANBU at his age is going to count how many jutsu I know as I test them on their dying bodies. Kakashi Hataki was many things, a failure as a teammate and big brother being the two most important ones, in his opinion, but he wouldn't stand for a newly promoted genin that barely passed to die in the core. Before he went to his obviously senile Hokage he needed some information. My name is Kakashi Hataki. Who are you? You're awfully young to be an ANBU. You're what, eleven? He bantered, fishing for any scrap of insight. Uzumaki Naruto, and yes, I know I'm too young and inexperienced for this but the Hokage and commander put me in it for a reason, okay? And I'm twelve. I'm not that small. Naruto snapped a bit at the man. Not liking him one bit. 
Kakashi ignored the tone, sights already set on a certain Kage. His old team arrives then, no doubt hiding from the horrors that were his best friend. And looking at how Naruto was in a bone-crushing hug listening about youth, he couldn't blame them. Kakashi drags his old Kohai into the hall. Tenzo, he says coolly. Why is my future student in ANBU? The anger was evident and promising pain for lies. Tenzo met his gaze evenly. Senpai. You will have to take that up with the Hokage. As far as I know Naruto was put onto my squad for his potential as both a ninjutsu specialist and tracking slash traps master with his shadow clones. And no offense but you've never shown interest in him before. Just because you feel you owe a debt to his father doesn't mean you can cast him aside until it suits you. If you'll excuse me I have a limited time to turn a genin into an ANBU. He left a stunned Kakashi and ducked his head into the doorway in time to see Guy offer to take Naruto on early morning training. Training? Yes. Naruto said excitably. Training was always welcome. Course, he'd never seen Guy's methods before. Wosh. Then I will wake you at four tomorrow, my most youthful neighbor. Akam, time to go. Naruto, make two clones and have them study the rule and code of conduct books I left in your bag. We have training until nine tonight. Naruto nodded as he slid his mask on, becoming mouse to the outside world. The people in his complex may come to know his identity over time but the more obscure he was to the common ninja and villager the better. Yes, Captain. He didn't even try to say, Captain Fish Eyes, Dragon was bad enough, what could his captain do? Yugao held on to Naruto's shoulder and shunshined them to Team Rose training grounds. Training grounds, two hours later. Naruto was working on katas in slow motion with Tenzo while ten clones worked on tree climbing under Yugao's gaze and Hikaru taught another ten clones the shuriken shadow clone jutsu. As he focused on the forms Tenzo brought to light his situation. We have four weeks of uninterrupted training. Every day from 6 m after guy till 9 at night I will work you to the bone. In this first week we will work on solidifying your basics and hopefully have you master both the shuriken shadow clone and the tree climbing. Like all ANBU in this time the kawarimi will become seal-less and instantaneous as it is the jutsu that has saved more ninjas than any other jutsu or tool. After that water walking, shunshin, kenjutsu, and an elemental attack will be introduced. You will also have memorized the ANBU signs and rule book in this time, as well as the map of the land of fire. I can already do kawarimi without seals. Naruto looked away in embarrassment as Tenzo gaped at him. Show me. He ordered. Naruto wouldn't lie, but Tenzo had trouble believing that the boy could learn to use the jutsu to that level without help, no matter how wrong his records were. Naruto instantly replaced himself with his backpack about a hundred feet away. I had nothing better to do last summer and read in a book about how getting Kawarimi to be seal-less was a chakra control exercise, I thought it would help my clones. Naruto didn't mention he took seven months of practicing every day to do so. WL good work. Then we will replace that time with hand speed practice in general and battle experience with the Kawarimi. What happens after that? A month of training won't make me ready for missions. Naruto scowled as Tenzo wrapped his arm with a twig to correct his elbow height for a grapple move. After that our team will take guard and patrol missions of non-essential areas for another two months to solidify teamwork. During this grace period your speed, dodging, taijutsu and kenjutsu skills will continue to be worked into something passable and the core's trap specialist will begin improving your repertoire in the art. I left space throughout these three months for two hours in the evening for you to learn another skill of either fuenjutsu, more ninjutsu, or additional weaponry. Which do you prefer? Naruto thought for a moment. More ninjutsu sounded fun but to be honest Tenzo explained his control needed a lot of improvement before more jutsu than the ones planned could be learned, so that was out. Weaponry was necessary, 
but he already had three hours dedicated to it six days a week, any more throwing or sword practice shouldn't be needed. That left Fuenjutsu, sealing. I choose Fuenjutsu, Captain, Naruto said finally in a small voice, remembering the rule of, while on duty or training, quiet and serious. Tenzo nodded in approval at both his answer and the volume. Good choice, Mouse. I don't know more than the basics but I have a feeling even without help you'll find the art to be easy, he said knowingly. Naruto narrowed his eyes slightly and prepped to grill his captain on the subject when Tenzo cut off his intake of air. Ten minute break. I believe it's time we actually introduce ourselves besides names. The four ninja sat in a circle while clones continue their work, masks off in the grass. I know we haven't really had the chance yet but let's do proper introductions. Say your likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dreams. I will start. My name is Tenzo. I like Kanoha, tea ceremonies, nature, and reading architecture books. I don't like traitors, those who harm nature, and loud people, here Naruto winced. He was much quieter already but he didn't want to make his captain mad. I am busy as captain of Team Row, but a hobby would be gardening. My dream is make Kanoha strong and help you all become stronger. Yugao went next. Yugao Yuzuki, I like my boyfriend Hei 8, Kanoha, Dango, and Swords. I dislike those who look down on Kenjutsu and those who abandon comrades. My hobbies are sparring and visiting the hot springs. My dream is to become the world's greatest Kenjutsu user. Yo! I am Hikaru Hyuga. The best Hyuga in town. I like my clan, Kanoha, and messing around. I dislike seriousness, my clan's caged bird seal, and those who hate pranks. My hobbies are messing with people and origami. My dream is to become a NBU commander and raise a family. Hikaru's speech was joking and fun, bringing a smile to Naruto's face. Your go, Chibi. And the smile was gone. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, Hokage-sama, even if I don't trust him at the moment was Naruto's unspoken addition, and my new teammates. I dislike traitors, people who mock me, and the three minutes it takes for the ramen to cook. My dream dot well it was to be Hokage but now I don't know. Probably to become strong enough to protect my precious people. Naruto finished, not noticing the small smiles his teammates shared. That alone made him more qualified for the position than half of the ninja. Good job. We have three months to make Naruto ready for B and a class missions let's get to work. Yugao looked determined at Tenzo's words while Hikaru and Naruto jumped for joy. Oi. Act your age, Hikaru. And Naruto, you're on duty. Yugao scolded. Naruto quieted and stood ramrod straight but Hikaru looked hurt. Ah, but Yugao senpai I'm only fifteen. Let me have fun with the chibi. He pouted. Naruto felt the need to hit his senpai but held back if only because he stood no chance of landing said hit, last night proved that unfortunate truth. Hokage's office. You let Naruto into ANBU? Are you insane, Hokage-sama? Kakashi kept his voice mostly calm but the absence of his book suggested otherwise. Sarutobi sighed in annoyance at the man's repeating questions. We've been over this before, Kakashi. Naruto is now one of my personal ANBU, not your future student. But, I was supposed to, if you want to play the, teach him, card you should have approached him in the academy like I suggested after he failed the first time. Trying to convince me now won't work. Kakashi's head drooped in shame. It's true, he should have done more for the blonde besides the occasional guard rotation or donated groceries. However. His head whipped up in hope. If you were to offer a young ANBU some tracking or ninjutsu lessons on his days off, Sunday, I believe, then I wouldn't have any problems with it. Kakashi beamed at the chance. He'd make this right. Understood, Hokage-sama. In a puff of smoke he left. 
I sounded so confident while defending my decision to him, but I have my doubts. I don't. He's already become more emotionally stable under Tenzo and Guy will be working on his endurance every morning as a favor to me. Naruto is fitting in quite nicely. A voice spoke from nowhere but Sarutobi knew who it was no matter how well they distorted their voice or masked their chakra. Dragon, he breathed. Report on the initiation last night. Dragon chuckled. The bonfire went well, too well really. Hikaru started a ritualistic dancing. Honestly, if not for his eyes I wouldn't know he was from a major clan that prided themselves on their image. Sarutobi snorted. The same could be said for you, especially before. Perhaps. After a pregnant cause Sarutobi speaks again. Is it wise to separate Naruto from the village for three months? I believe so. It gives Naruto time to heal after finding out about his burden and the chance for him to fade from their minds. True, but not telling Irika and his classmates? Dragon shrugged at the concern. Most ANBU don't spread their identities around anyways even if it's not forbidden among allies. Keeping Naruto busy will also keep him from pranking HQ or the village, especially as he can spam hundreds of himself. Both shuddered at the thought. Point taken, my friend. 4 a.m., next day. Naruto was awoken by being thrown into the ceiling. Wosh. Good morning my youthful neighbor. Let us work our flames of youth and become more youthful. Naruto groaned, and reached for his uniform. Give me five minutes to get dressed. He mumbled. Guy gave a thumbs up in the darkened room and the flash from his teeth blinded a bleary-eyed Naruto. He worked on pulling the pants on and was moving to the shirt. Guy's patience ran short at this point and helped Naruto change. Into a green jumpsuit. At 9 am an irate, bloody, and ridiculous-looking Naruto trudged to Rose training ground. His three teammates bit their lips to stop their laughter and dropped it, but not before Hikaru snapped a picture. You look rather youthful this morning. Tenzo said with a straight face. From that day on Naruto set his alarm ten minutes before four and was fully dressed before Guy arrived. Six days later, Sunday at noon. Naruto was dragging himself up the steps after a grueling eight-hour workout with Guy and his mini-me. Normal shinobi would be sore for weeks but with Naruto a hot shower and relaxing afternoon eating ramen would cure every ache. However, waiting outside his door was his least favorite neighbor, Kakashi. The man had explained his odd behavior during their first meeting, apparently he was supposed to be his jonin sensei, but Naruto still didn't particularly like the man who just seemed to ignore you with his book yet still follow your every move. However, his captain and Yugao senpai always stressed manners, so Naruto put on the most polite and fake smile he knew. Hello, Kakashi. If you're looking for Captain Tenzo he is on a mission today, Sundays were his free days, the rest of the squad had patrol. Kakashi I smiled behind his book. I was actually looking for you, Naruto. I don't get my team for another week and even then it will be months before we do many missions. The Hokage told me Sundays were your days off, no? Naruto nodded and somehow the eye smile grew larger. Excellent. How would you like tracking lessons every Sunday from noon until seven? Naruto grinned slightly at that. He wasn't one to pass up more training. Maybe Kakashi wasn't that bad. Irika, day of. Team placements. A fuming Irika told the brats their team placements, and, same as canon, Sai replaces Naruto, and walked out. His favorite student was nowhere to be found, the ANBU commander just informed him that Naruto had an unusual placement and a homeschooled boy would fill the void on Team 7. Even the Hokage refused to tell him anything, claiming Naruto would contact him if he wished and that his new assignment and living quarters were classified for Jonin and above. And that translated to Iruka, a mere chunin, standing no chance to find out about his knuckle-headed student. Oh Naruto! What have you gotten into now? 
Collapsing at his desk at home, Irika ran his fingers over his scar, grunting at the mysterious file box spotted on the bare wood. Being a Chunin teacher it wasn't uncommon for him to find such a scene, if the Hokage wanted a certain lesson taught in the academy without the council interfering, or if Naruto hadn't been eating enough, a box or envelope would just magically appear. Sighing he pushed the medium file folder boxes lid away, immediately perking up at the sticky note saying, Real Naruto Uzumaki Files Classified. As Iruka read each report, test, and past graduation attempt his blood got hotter and hotter. By the end Iruka had tears from the realization he had screwed up. Thinking back Iruka realized he was to blame, he never called on Naruto in his class, believing the other teachers who said he would just cause trouble, and treated him like he was just a troublemaker, when in actuality Naruto's pranks were ingenious, horrible for the victim, but ingenious. Instead of realizing Naruto wasn't stupid and his pranks were more than just childish escapades but elaborately planned missions, Iruka had brushed off Naruto and believed treating him to ramen once a week made up for it. He didn't deserve a second chance, but a note on the last page gave him hope. One day he will visit you. Then, Iruka would apologize, and make it up to him. Until then, Iruka had several teachers to visit. Time skip, one month, first patrol. This is it? Naruto asked, a bit miffed. He heard how his appointment to ANBU would let him bypass the dreaded D ranks that Kakashi complained having to lead his students on. But this C rank patrol and guard mission of the hospital seemed to be the ANBU version of D's, no action really, moving through the rafters while suppressing his chakra, he barely had that down now and remaining unseen for twelve-hour shifts in uncomfortable positions. The three explosive notes he finished this morning for his first mission were itching to be used, but using explosives in the hospital were frowned upon. His patrol partner, Yugao, bopped him on the head. Yes, this is it. What, did you think ANBU was all, assassinations and sabotage? Naruto nodded seriously, thinking that yes, that is what he signed up for. Well it's not. Every squad has both village duties and border patrol to go along. With the higher level missions. Now be quiet and go guard the front lobby. And remember the radio and shadow clones for emergencies. Naruto sighed and left for his mission. The posts for the ANBU split each floor into two sections. Team Row was assigned the bottom two floors while another managed the top three. From his perch Naruto had a front row seat to all the hospital drama. It was horribly boring but a difficult man at the desk looked promising. Sir, please calm down. I will not calm down. Not until you take me to my son. A simple sea rank to river they say? Simple my ass, he's been in heart surgery for six hours. A burly civilian waved his fist in a threatening manner and the nurse gave the signal for his intervention. Code anger, Naruto whispered into the headset. Code anger translated into a civilian on the verge of physical violence. Appearing between the med Nin and the red-faced father Naruto said the rehearsed lines Captain Tenzo drilled into his head the past two days. Sir, my apologies for any trouble but the healers are doing their best. Please be patient and sit down. Naruto pointed a finger to the nearest seat, feeling very much like a crossing guard rather than a shinobi. A fist comes at him and only the reflexes his training ground into him allowed Naruto's hand to grab the meaty glob, pumping chakra to match the strength of the man three times his size. Calm down? Hell no, you ninja always order us civilians around and I'm sick of it. He shouldn't even be a ninja. Take me to my son, now. Yugao Shunshin behind him, knocking him out with a tranquilizer. Naruto inclined his head gratefully and two orderlies dragged the unconscious father away. Relieved, Naruto turned, nodded to the grateful but perplexed nurse probably not used to a 5 foot 2 ANBU and disappeared to his post again. Good work, Mouse Yugao's voice praised from the headset. Naruto smiled slightly. Maybe guard posts weren't so bad. Naruto, in his off-duty gear, 
dived under a branch in pursuit of the package. Kakashi was having him practice the capture and retrieval aspect of ANBU, and his tiny summons packin was deceivingly elusive for his size. Naruto refused to give up however Ramen was on the line. Ever since Naruto joined ANBU he had a sneaking suspicion everyone hated Ramen or at least him going to get Ramen. Monday through Saturday lunch and dinner were packed affairs to save time while Sundays were too exhausting for him to want to trudge across town in the opposite direction of the apartment for ramen. The couple of times Hikaru treated him they always stopped at the bent kunai, a bar and grill for active-slash-former ANBU. Deliveries were impractical as well for his favorite food. Naruto was stuck to instant ramen and a thief was going around the complex that only stole the instant cups. It was an outrage, as the bastard was able to bypass every trap he set up, even the barrier seals. But Kakashi had given Pakin a scroll to carry today. If Naruto caught him he would be treated to unlimited ramen at Ichiraku's. Nothing would hinder his quest. Almost there. The pug diverted himself from a mud pit trap and blindly charged past another set of explosive tags. Closer. Packin rounded a corner, where five clones waited. He dodged three but two more were waiting with a net and glue. I hate you, he growled in a rough voice as he tried to clean his paws off. Naruto smirked and grabbed the scroll. I win. A slow clap sounds from behind. Kakashi and Dragon materialized from the trees. Impressive, only one hour to capture and even I couldn't track Naruto most of the time. Kakashi complimented with an eye smile. Dragon whistled. To keep up with a mean kin after only a month. Not too shabby. Not good enough, but almost passable. Naruto beamed at Dragon's roundabout praise. Dragon was harsh at times, by monthly inter-squad training he led still left bruises on Naruto's spleen, but he was fair. If Dragon said it was, almost passable, then it was, almost good, by normal standards. Then again, Naruto was in ANBU, everyone else's standards didn't apply to them. Thank you senpai, commander. Naruto bowed. Before he would have loudly proclaimed how of course he was awesome, but that died the day Iruka almost did. Well, that and Tenzo tazzed him or burned a ramen cup every time he boasted or acted rude. So much precious wasted. I think you earned the ramen, Naruto, my treat. Kakashi noticed Dragon back away slightly to the side but didn't think much of it. Until he was flapping in the wind as Naruto forcibly dragged him towards the stand. What are we waiting for? Ramen calls me. Blessed ramen, here I come. Poor Kakashi could only hope to survive the hyperactive blonde's charge as the boy slipped from serious, on duty mode, to kid mode. Ramen stand. Kakashi was regaining consciousness in time to see Naruto devour his seventeenth bowl. Keep him coming, Tuchi. Kakashi senpai is paying. Naruto cheered. Tuchi chuckled, glad his favorite blonde was back, his stand needed the money. Naruto. Where have you been for a month? Even your apartment was cleaned out. I am swatted Naruto with her towel to gain his attention. Seeing the red aura surround his big sister, he gulped. W.L., I am. I passed and am now a part of a special assignment for the Hokage, Kakashi interjected. ANBU weren't really supposed to advertise their status, those that figured it out, fine. Otherwise? Need to know only. He shoots Naruto a meaningful look, at which point the blonde nods. Yeah, a special assignment. Ninja stuff, can't talk about it. He grinned at her and she relaxed. Oh ho ho. That must mean you're closer to being Hokage, right Naruto, and where's your headband? She smiled brightly, as did Tuchi. Naruto frowned slightly and their smiles turned to confusion. He <laughs> he, see, I don't really want to be Hokage anymore. The paperwork, counsels, bah, too much work for an awesome ninja like me. 
he said cheekily, only to yelp when, despite his captain being on a mission, a jolt shoots up his spine for every bragging word he spoke. Oh, and I'm trying to keep my passing status a secret so if you could not say anything please? Father and daughter soften their eyes and nod, understanding. Kakashi was somewhat shocked at Naruto's lifelong ambition changing but realized he shouldn't be. It was common knowledge in the Jonin ANBU circles that the third and Naruto had a sort of falling out after Naruto learned of his tenant. Since that night the Hokage looked even older than normal and cringed every time he gazed at the pictures of a younger, smiling Naruto wearing his hat. Rumor was the boy had even taken to calling the Hokage by his proper name, scaring many. If Naruto called someone by their proper title and they never had a narrow nickname, then Naruto respected them as a person and authority figure. An example of this would be Iruka or Kakashi, neither ever receiving a playful butchering. But, if Naruto gave someone a personalized nickname and said person betrayed him enough to lose said nickname, it was the equivalent to being spit in the face and peed on by Naruto. So much like his mother. Oh? Then what is your dream, oh awesome ninja? I am giggled, breaking Kakashi out of his musings. To be strong enough to protect those precious to me. And maybe get a ninja animal. He added absent-mindedly. Kakashi perked at this. A ninja animal? What kind? Was his little brother trying to emulate him, to become a dog summoner? If so, Kakashi's private dreams of his own mini-me would be realized. He could rub it into Guy that his look-alike lived next door. Yeah, a cat, though ninja cats cost the pay of an S-rank mission so it will take a about a year before I can afford one. Still, cats are so cool. And there goes that dream, for cats were the opposite of Kakashi's, hip and cool. Unless. Say, Naruto. Try this on. Naruto slurps a noodle and grabs the cloth shoved his way. A dot mask? Naruto was hesitant, it almost felt like Kakashi wanted a clone but surely the man wasn't that desperate to one-up guy, was he? Kakashi I smiled. Just try it on, okay? It makes you look cool. He shrugs and slides it over his face. Ayam pulls out a hand mirror and lets him look. He had to admit, he did look cool. I like it. Naruto says after a minute more of admiring himself. Kakashi's eye smile somehow got larger. Good, good. Phase 1 complete. He muttered, too low for Naruto to hear. Within a year Naruto would have a dog, not some smelly cat. Well I have to get going, early training tomorrow and wall patrol. Naruto slid out from the bar and bolted across the rooftops at speeds unheard of for a fresh graduate. Kakashi couldn't be prouder as his sensei's son already resembled a well-trained shinobi. A cough brings Kakashi back to the ramen bar and he blanches at the bill. F57 bowels. Tuchi. Cackled and had dollar signs at the money he just made. Six weeks later. Hiruzen puffed on his pipe, groaning at his jonin's stupidity. A simple C rank, turned into A B or a rank 1 after the group was attacked by the demon brothers, missing ninja from Kiri. Normally the procedure was to kill missing ninja and take their bounties, as interrogating every renegade genin and chunin wasted resources. But these two were from the Bloody Mist, an island nation so tight-lipped even Jiraiya had yet to get reliable intel on the smallest of the Great Five in years, and these demon brothers had only defected thirteen months ago. Get me Team Ro, he spoke to what appeared to be thin air. Time for Naruto to experience his first pickup mission. If only Kakashi hadn't insisted his team would continue the mission, with or without backup, no one could be spared for that long, but Saratobi couldn't justify forcing them to return without the village looking weak, it had to be the commanding officer's call. And Team 7's leader believed putting it to a vote. What is this, a council meeting? Why can't all my shinobi be like my ANBU? Six hours later. Team Ro barely touched the branches, they went so fast. 
Naruto was forced to use his chakra to keep the whiplash from yanking his cloak's hood down. The mission wasn't urgent, but their captain wished to test their speed and agility after not being outside the village for weeks, in Naruto's case, ever. The verdict? Naruto held them up. Five minute break, eat and drink, Tenzo signed. Rule 12 of ANBU mission parameters stated talking out loud was forbidden unless absolutely necessary. Yes captain, they signed back. Sorry for holding you guys back, Naruto bowed his head in shame. For all his speed it would still take months before he could match his teammates in their ridiculous travel pace. Do not apologize mouse. When we get back, up agility and speed practice. Tenzo assured him. By new year you will be quicker than Wolf. Said Wolf scoffed silently at this, he was the second fastest among them without Chakra. With Chakra, Tenzo added, breaking the budding pride in Naruto and panic in Hikaru. Four hours later Ro landed around Team 7 who had taken to guarding the prisoners, Meizu and Gozu, who were gagged and glaring. Tenzo stepped forward, him having the only necessary speaking role. Senpai. Team Ro, Confirmation 17 Ro, are here to apprehend the prisoners for questioning back in Kanoha. Tenzo was stiff, formal. At the apartments he bantered and relaxed around his old captain. On missions? Tenzo could put the daimyo to shame in etiquette. Thank you, Tiger. I take it this mouse's first time on a pickup mission? Kakashi drawled even as his eye bore into the smallest ANBU. For his part Naruto didn't sweat or fidget, even as Sasuke and Sakura balked at him and Sai merely gazed without expression. Ah, uh, yes, senpai. You may leave now, we'll take it from here. Kakashi led the genin away. Naruto chanelled chakra to his ears, a control exercise Hikaru started him on a few days ago, he could only hold it for a thirty seconds while mastered was an hour to listen in on his old classmates and his replacement. Kakashi-sensei, who was that ANBU? He looked my age, Sasuke questioned, feeling weak. Ah, uh, Sasuke. You will find there are shinobi younger than you three but stronger than I am. Age is inconsequential to shinobi. To be a ninja is to negate any obstacle one has, such as being too old or too small. Kakashi hid his smile as he imagined Naruto bristling at the comment. Naruto cut the chakra off and did in fact bristle for a moment until Tenzo brought him back. Mouse. We will taking them back using the long method instead of sealing scrolls to get you used to it and for sleep deprivation training. Naruto nodded and everyone winced slightly. The long method involved locking their chakra up and binding them after checking for weapons. It would be a grueling 20-hour light jog. Come over here and draw the seals on them, I'll check them before you activate them to prevent an explosion. Naruto worked carefully, ignoring the two missing ninjas' fearful and hate-filled eyes. Within half an hour and a lesson on a new knot, Team Ro was off. Naruto stumbled, bleary-eyed and dirty into his room. Not bothering to take his uniform off he plank fell into bed. Guy and Kakashi were both on missions and his team was off until tomorrow night all was good, he could sleep. As he drifted off Naruto considered what bad karma he had to have been given Tenzo as a captain on the mission. For the entirety of the 21 hours Naruto was forced to be in the middle to clutch the prisoner's rope and strengthen it with chakra, the easy job. Until Tenzo decided he also had to work on point balancing with one head while reciting the advanced theory of hand signs all twelve of them and the history behind them. Anytime he messed up either task Naruto had to restart. Needless to say it was tedious and by the end his team was prepared to suppress him if he tapped into the Kyubi chakra for the first time, his frustration was palatable. All that was behind him though now and Naruto was free of sadistic sensei until tomorrow night for hospital patrol. Week later. And that's all the intel we have. The goal is to bring back Ryuga alive for interrogation. Dragon barked. Naruto and his team were kneeled in the commander's dim office, being given their first A-rank mission since Naruto joined. 
Tenzo hadn't wanted this, he and the Hokage hoped to keep Naruto close for at least another month, but the village's safety came first, and Naruto's abilities made Ro the best squad to track down the traitor before he reached Rice. Even if none of them were fresh. Ryuga Ryushi. A slightly above average Chunin, 22 years old. Received a field promotion three years prior for his contributions in the Barrier Corps, but most of his colleagues couldn't name a single thing about him except he was a diligent worker. As they set out through the North Gate Naruto couldn't help but notice nothing pointed to traitorous activities. Ryuga was just so average. That's what makes him the perfect spy. Yugao signed. Naruto cocked his head. Being mediocre in every way? Exactly, no ninja is able to remain so completely under the radar. If you ever find someone that has no life, hobby, quirk, or bad days, they're up to something. She explained. Mouse, 200 clones, send out in pairs. When they find the trail tell us. Tenzo ordered, deadly serious, as was Hikaru. Ryuga defected last night around midnight after his superior opened a loyalty investigation on him. It was now 7 am. He was part of the barrier team. The safety of Kanoha rested on their shoulders. It only took 30 minutes for the trail to be found. Ryuga's chakra signature had been tagged leaving the barrier in the direction to Rice, and the man wasn't well versed in track evasion, making it child's play for Naruto. Now they were approaching the valley of the end the border between the two countries. If he goes over border, permission to pursue? Yugao asks as they gain on him, Naruto clones and Hikaru disabling the few traps set up. Yes, but once we set over the border, if we are captured or killed we will be lab-led missing ninja to keep Kanoha from the backlash. That put a heavy silence on the group. There was only two reasons that directive would be made, the first is that the target belongs to said nation, and the other was the nation had a hidden village, meaning conducting missions, and not just passing through, on their land was equivalent to openly declaring war. Somehow, in the recent past, Rice had started their own village, and it was on Kanoha's doorstep. Ryuga was close, he just made it past the valley. In his hands were the plans for Kanoha's barrier points, necessary for Orochimaru-sama's plan during the Chunin exams. The original plan was for Ryuga to send the scroll with Kabuto next week, but the loyalty investigation changed everything. Ryuga was headed towards a better life, one where his true talent would be recognized, not stunted because he wasn't some big shot name. He hated pretending to be weak in Odo he was a jonin, not a pitiful chunin. They would see, Kanoha would realize their mistake soon. Ryuga Ryushi. Surrender yourself, you're surrounded. Tenzo spoke with confidence, making his voice echo with chakra. Naruto clones henged into different ANBU members circled in, tantos drawn. The real team row were mixed in. Crap. They sent over 20 ANBU after me. But I'm just a chunin, even if I'm a part of the barrier squad. Heh, I'll bet they'll underestimate me, and then I'll strike. He smirked arrogantly and pulled out a chakra conductive knife, his pride and joy, preparing for an escape. Unfortunately for Ryuga, ANBU don't underestimate, especially those under Tenzo's care. He taught Naruto and the others from their first practice that ANBU treat babies the same way they treat Kages, with extreme prejudice. Formation C 10 of the clones jumped close, puffing away with twice the normal amount just before they connected. In the confusion Yugao and Hikaru go in, Hikaru blocking the Tenketsu on Ryuga's arms and legs while Yugao took out the weapon. Finally, Tenzo created wood bindings and Naruto shinshined behind Ryuga, knocking him out with a chop-like dragon taught him during the last practice. Tenzo sealed the traitor into a prisoner scroll and the ANBU began to head back. Good work. Let's go dash down, and they hit the deck. A fist the size of a boulder grazed the crown of Naruto's head, cutting a strand. He shivered at the close call. An Akimichi. Hikaru let a stream of curses. Not just any Akimichi that is Akira, 
an A-rank missing ninja. She defected two years ago, now we know where she went. In front of them was indeed an Akimichi, more muscle than fat though and a music note headband adorned her forehead. You crossed the border, prepare to die, she taunted. Tenzo cursed inside. They just finished a gate patrol before being given this mission, no one was fresh and Akira was bordering on elite Jonin two years ago, what level would she be now, studying in a new village? No, better to talk their way out than fight, keeping Ryuga from escape was top priority. We have not crossed the border, I assure you. I suggest we go our separate ways instead of needless bloodshed. Tenzo reasoned. Akira just laughed. I say you crossed the border and your bounty alone, Woodland Tiger, will pay my food bill for a month. She expanded both arms and the group scattered. Truth was Akira was not actually looking for a fight, she was at less than half her chakra and recovering from a mission. But orders were orders. She had to get Ryuga, take his intel, and then kill him. Kanoha couldn't find out her master's plans. Wolf, now. Tenzo yelled, and Hikaru landed on the right hand. Sending a lightning-enhanced gentle fist, it's stupid for other Hyuga to not use much ninjutsu so much potential, at the elbow, the arm shrinks to normal size, hanging limp. Hikaru is hit by the left hand, however, and is slammed into a tree. Yugao blocks another punch with her sword and preps the planned counter-attack, only for both to be blown away, screaming with blood pouring from the ears. How do you like my decapitating sound waves, kitty cat? Akira sneers, showing holes in her fingers letting out sound waves. She expands her whole middle, ready to squash the two. Wood style, tree limbs, Tenzo states quietly from behind, and five thick wood pillars rise to ensnare Akira. Meanwhile, Naruto and two clones pick up the unconscious Yugao and Hikaru, taking them back to Kanoha's side, but not before receiving a burst eardrum from a disrupted sound wave. Like this can hold me. Partial expansion jutsu. And one finger. From the non-blocked hand enlarged, sending Tenzo into a tree with a sickening thud. Tenzo bursts into wood, and the real one rises out of the ground. Sound waves tear his armor apart, giving him deep lacerations in the torso. Take that you bastard. She ground out. Akira had let loose the last of her chakra, and the wood bindings drained the rest away. She struggled to stay awake but smirked, wanting to go out with a bang. Tenzo sees this and finishes with the plan. Now, mouse. Tenzo shouts as he slumps against a tree. Naruto switches with the destroyed clone. Six hand signs later and his second elemental jutsu impacts Akira's head. Wind style, air force palm, and a compressed vacuum of air fires into the woman's skull from his hand center, blowing her brains out. Mission that accomplished. Tenzo whispered, and fell unconscious. Captain. Naruto was frantic. After sealing what was left of Akira Akimichi he lugged his captain over his shoulder, balance broken from his burst eardrum. It takes almost five hours for Naruto and clones to reach the patrol near the gates. Immediately his team was taken to the ANBU hospital and Naruto was rushed into a meeting with the Hokage, Commander, and Danzo after a quick healing session. ANBU Agent Mouse, we are here to have an oral report on Ryuga's capture and apparent death, seeing as the scroll containing him was damaged beyond salvage when your captain, Tiger, was injured. The Hokage was grave, on one hand Ryuga failed in handing over the information to whomever he was trying to and an A-rank rouge was taken out. On the other hand, they couldn't interrogate him, and both of the dead were damaged beyond a mind scan. A hollow victory, really. Hokage-sama. Team Ro, after a twelve-hour shift, was summoned to track down the traitor Ryuga Ryushi. We set out from the north gate. Naruto took a deep breath as he completed his reported. His stomach churned as his superiors seemed to loom down on him. He followed orders to a T back up. Twice he saw an opportunity to jump in before the signal or to rescue injured parties, 
and twice he let the opportunity slip past because of orders. Yes, they won. And yes, everyone was expected to survive and be back on rotation in a week. I see you blaming yourself, Mouse. Dragon cut into his thoughts. You were not ready for this mission yet but you performed it to a high standard. We lost a valuable source of intelligence, but we kept everyone alive, that is most important here. Ryuga didn't escape, marking this as a successful mission. Do not coddle the boy. The mission parameters were clearly to bring Ryuga back and keep him from any outside forces, they did that. Being alive was preferable, but be grateful our secrets weren't leaked. Sarutobi stopped Danzo from tearing Naruto down, the boy was tired, injured, though he was mostly healed by now, and beating himself up over his inability to do more yet. Go rest, mouse. You will spend the week under. My tutelage until your squad is ready. Be at HQ tomorrow at 9. Oh, and the bounty will be split evenly between your squad. Dismissed. Naruto wordlessly disappeared in a shunshin, longing for his bed. You put the weapon in ANBU but still you coddle him. For shame, Hiruzen. Danzo sneered as he hobbled out. That was his first kill, correct? Sarutobi asked with an eye roll after the elder left. Dragon nodded. Tomorrow it will hit him, after he is rested and settled, I'll give him the talk. Sarutobi closed his eyes, wishing he could be the one to give it, but knowing Naruto still hadn't completely forgiven him. Very well then. Sunday, two months later. You'll have to do better than that. Naruto said as he danced around the field, dodging Sasuke's endless stream of fireballs. It was funny outmaneuvering his former rival but he also felt bored. Was he really rookie of the year? Sheesh, I could take him without my hands now. Naruto had spent a week being Dragon's training dummy disguised as actual teaching. Naruto had walked into the HQ training room sick to his stomach as he realized he killed someone. He looked at his hands in horror at what he did, until the commander cleared his throat. Dragon told him bluntly, you kill, that's what a ninja does. You didn't enjoy it, that is good, that means you're human, but grow up, killing and dying for the village is a part of our job. Now prepare yourself, you're mine this week. And without another word Naruto was sent flying with a punch. Hell week had commenced. Dragon called it dodge and speed training. Naruto had called it being a dragon's chew toy 101. That was two months ago and since then his team had upped their training to prevent such a simple enemy outclassing them with an unexpected trick. Naruto used his reward money to bribe a medic ANBU in how to patch up wounds better, Tenzo almost died from blood loss, and Naruto apparently should have sutured the cuts and checked for concussion before moving any of them. The medic, another Hyuga, was pleased to see someone taking a further interest in first aid, as only captains had to take courses over it and if the captain was out, many squads were screwed beyond the absolute basics as competent combat medics numbered less than ten in the entire village the others were basically doctors with a little ninja training. Naruto wasn't able to learn medical ninjutsu, but within a few weeks he could stitch, cauterize, and brace to just below battlefield standards in speed and quality. Three bandit cleanups and a two-week border assignment had forced Naruto to fully get over the killing is an absolute last resort feeling he had grown up with in the academy. Many shinobi in peacetime could find ways to just capture or evade targets and rarely had to end lives ANBU wasn't like that. Though the force spent a large amount of time as silent watchers inside the walls, they got their hands dirtier than most. Naruto learned to accept it over time. It helped that Hikaru took it upon himself to force Naruto to find a hobby. A small plant now greeted him after work every day from the living room window. Today, Naruto had gone to the training grounds for his tracking lessons only to find Kakashi-senpai waiting with his genin team, a pale boy he'd never talked to before smiling creepily at him. Sasuke had taken one look at his black outfit and mask and smirked. 
As he was off duty and planned to go out to eat afterwards Naruto had left his headband and emergency uniform sealed in a scroll in his pocket. No one but the Hokage and those above Chunin rank had caught on that the demon became a shinobi. While not imperative for him to hide the fact, the promise of a ramen buffet from Tenzo if he managed to keep a low profile until the Chunin exams was plenty of motivation. Dobe. Trying to copy a ninja since you couldn't be one? In truth Sasuke was curious, no one had seen Naruto since the graduation exam. One person swore they spotted him at Ichiraku's once two months ago but nobody was sure. He had become a ghost. The Naruto standing in front of him was like a cat, slender, light on his feet, and deadly quiet. Hello, Kakashi-senpai. Naruto chose to ignore his old schoolmates, he technically outranked them and if he started insulting them Tenzo would have his hide for setting a bad example. Even while on missions he finds out. Are they practicing with us? Hello, Naruto. Yes, my cute little genin are starting tracking to prepare for the Chunin exams in four months. Naruto nodded in understanding. The commander debriefed us on that last week so many patrols and guard stations and we get the worst one, Naruto grumbled. Team Ro was on second stage duty, meaning they were going to be stuck in Enko's personal playground. Captain Tenzo already had two practices a week scheduled in the forest to prepare and set up checkpoints. Kakashi winced slightly in mutual sympathy, not missing those days of monotonous watching of stupid genin play fighting. You'll be fine, he reassured weakly, not believing himself for a second, many ANBU tried to be put on medical leave or long-term missions when Kanoha hosted the exams. But enough of that. Naruto, you are going to be the target for these three today. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the genin while Sasuke and Sakura scoffed. Like that Baka could be anything special. I bet Sasuke will find him easily. Sakura shrieked loudly. Why should I waste my time with them senpai? If I'm here to be a target then I would rather go and nap at home. Naruto turned to leave. If you don't get caught I'll teach you the second step to your wind manipulation. That stopped the young ANBU, he finally mastered the leaf-cutting exercise but nobody knew or had time to tell him what the second stage was until after the Chunin exams. And teach you a wind jutsu tonight. That did it. Of course I'd like to help. Welcome to hell, Jenin, and just try to. Catch me. Naruto said with a grin before Naruto was replaced with a log without any smoke or seals. Kakashi chuckled at his students, well, two of them, the third was blank, expressions. Naruto is on a special assignment, so to say, which is why he isn't on a team and you haven't seen him, Kakashi answered the unspoken questions. When they paused to contemplate his words the jonin decided to motivate them. Well? You have two hours so I'd start tracking him, his specialty is traps and tracking him will be difficult as his ears have become almost as good as an inazuka. And his chakra sensing will be ANBU level within the year went unsaid, Kakashi couldn't crush his students' hopes before they began. Watching his students dart into the forest Kakashi hoped his plan to nip his students' egos in the bud would work. Ever since the wave mission Team 7 had begun thinking themselves the best in Kanoha simply for surviving Zabuza and beating his apprentice. Cockiness and arrogance killed more shinobi than many would care to admit, and Kakashi was determined to not let his students become an engraving on the memorial stone. If they were beaten by Naruto, their pride would be crushed, allowing Kakashi to build them back up properly. As Naruto dodged another of Sasuke's sloppy punches he sighed. Just because he kept out of reach of them today and ended up capturing them Sasuke demanded that power, like Naruto, should just drop on his knees and hand over his hours of training, impossible. It would have been worse if the blonde had divulged that Kakashi tutored him. Naruto finally grew tired of the game and shunshined himself behind the older boy, knocking him out with a chop, following the same plan of attack he used on Ryuga, basic but effective. Dragon always said flashy jutsu were fine but a kunai or fist usually got the job done. Lately Naruto had started to see the logic in that worldview. Sakura and Sai stood a bit speechless. 
Here was the dead last, taking out the top graduate with little effort. Sai was of course stronger than Sasuke, though he was ordered to only show it in emergencies, but he was still surprised. Kakashi clapped slowly from a tree. That was a very decisive victory, Naruto. Sakura, Sai, take Sasuke home please and let him recover his pride alone. Oh, and you are not allowed to talk about your training here today or about seeing Naruto, am I clear? He bore his eye into them releasing killing intent. Sakura and Sai give affirmations and carry their unconscious teammate away. After they vanish down the path Kakashi I smiles at his least annoying student. Naruto, I believe I owe you a jutsu. Six hours later. Wind style, drilling air bullets. Naruto whispered, on team row, one had to learn to barely whisper the attacks unless in a pinch, and his three teammates actually had enough control to not use the speech release for focusing chakra on the lower ranked jutsu pushing his stomach out with chakra before. Compressing it, expelling two masses of compressed air towards a boulder twice the size of Kakashi. The two hit, and the boulder was cracked straight through the middle. That's enough for the day, Kakashi ordered and Naruto collapsed to one knee. For not completing your elemental manipulation yet you show surprising ability with the A-rank jutsu. With practice and cutting the waterfall I'm sure you'll be able to get up to six bullets. Kakashi I smiled as Naruto groaned and fell face first into the dirt. Of course, using a stronger call would give you a cushion of control. He added. You know why I can't do that, but thanks, Naruto mumbled. I have tower patrol for the week so I can send clones out to work on the waterfall. He wasn't happy about being given the right corner position for the entire week, it was the only spot that required a constant stream of the chameleon jutsu. Yugao and Tenzo swore it was to make him master it, but Naruto suspected they were just too lazy to do it themselves. Hey, senpai. Naruto asked hesitantly after a moment. Kakashi gave the go-ahead motion. I asked the Hokage about my parents again and he said he didn't know about them but he had that look in his eye, the one when he's lying to me, so I was wondering if you knew about them? Kakashi winced inside, hating himself for what he was about to do. I can't answer that, Naruto, so stop asking, he said harshly. Naruto flinched at the tone and Kakashi went back to his cheerful tone. Anyway, it will take months to spilt the waterfall, take your time, and I'll see next week. And Naruto was left alone to crawl back to his apartment. Next day, after shift. Naruto rolled his muscles, stretching after a tedious day of standing without being seen and listening to the Hokage do paperwork. A few times Jonin and Jenin squads would show for mission assignments or reports but general the sound of stamping was the only break in silence. Then Kakashi's team came in for another C rank, a diplomatic one requiring the Hokage's approval. Kakashi. I thought I told you to stop spending time at the memorial stone for hours, you're three hours late. The Hokage growled slightly. Naruto latched onto the words, memorial stone. I've heard of that, maybe my parents are on there? Why didn't I think of that before? Naruto, longing for any scrap of his past, determined himself to unravel the mystery of where he came from. After that Naruto had counted the seconds until his freedom. He set a new record for changing into his street clothes and darted out of the dim base. At the stone, Naruto ran his fingers along each name. Kito Ushio, Sakira Yuzumo, Kushina Uzumaki. Bingo. Writing the name down inside the cover of the history book Tenzo had assigned, Naruto took off back to HQ. Kushina was the only Uzumaki, making her most likely his mother. If the third never told him, that meant it was another secret, a secret kept in the basement of the records vault. At Dragon's Office. Excuse me, Dragon Sama. Naruto stood ramrod straight showing the most respect he could. He had to get on Dragon's good side. Ah, uh, Mouse. What does my favorite punching bag need? He sounded amused. Naruto resisted the urge to twitch, missing his mask already. 
I request to be assigned the records room rotation this week. Naruto said bluntly. Dragon hummed. Really? Now why would a young agent like you request the most monotonous post? Naruto had his excuse ready. This week Captain and Yugao Senpai are leaving on Wednesday for a special mission while Hikaru Senpai is putting in for a vacation until they return Sunday. I wish to earn extra money for a better sword and extra few injutsu lessons from Jiraiya-sama when he returns for the Chunin exams. I am told the record's rotation pays more than others. Everything Naruto said was true, he did need extra money, records paid equal to AC rank and a half each shift, to bribe Jiraiya-sama into teaching him for a couple hours on seals, Naruto was on level 2, and level 3 was proving to be too much without a tutor to clear some things up and his squad did leave him for the week. Naruto originally would have taken the several days off as a reason to stay in a secluded training ground, camping supplies in hand, and work non-stop on wind manipulation and his new jutsu. Now he'd send ten clones to make progress on the waterfall while he snooped for his birth certificate and probable mother's file. Hmm very well, report tomorrow to Lizard for your post. You'll be in the lowest basement for the next week. Dragon shoot him away. When his subordinate was out of earshot Dragon allowed a chuckle. It's about time you started searching, you're ready to know, even if our Hokage can't see it yet. Though his manipulation skills need work. Oh well, I guess another private session is in order. Apartment. Naruto was too giddy to sleep, he would have a week to send clones into the complex, his parents were at his fingertips. It was this elation that caused Naruto to be on the floor, kunai pressed to his neck. Mousy chan you make this too easy, a sultry voice whispered in his ear. A shiver ran down his spine at that. Only one person was like this. Enko-senpai. You made your point please get off of me. Naruto tried to stay calm, he found that when dealing with Enko, going off the deep end just turned her on. Ah, but this snake likes mice for snacks. Why can't you play with me? She pouted and got off him. Naruto breathed out, letting his heart beat slow. I take it Kurinai left you for a suma tonight again? Naruto asked since she moved into an apartment down the hall a month ago she always bothered him, Kakashi, or Yugao when Kurinai wouldn't let her in her own apartment upstairs. Enko pouted. Yeah, and no one to mess with at T and I. She looked hopefully at Naruto. No. Absolutely not. I won't pay for your dango. Or let you stay here tonight on my couch, even if you do swear. It's more comfortable than yours. He made the X sign with his arms to emphasize his objection. What if I taught you how to make and use a sleeping poison this week so you won't have to buy them for missions? Damn it. He had been trying to decipher that recipe from the Common Poisons and Sleeping Toxins for Dummies book for weeks but there was a reason poison makers were very rare as he couldn't figure out the right mixture balance and kept killing the rats he bought for practice, and, really, the fact that in Naruto most shinobi couldn't do a bit of everything made them little more than magical soldiers, instead, they should all understand the basics of most areas, if only to save money on supplies. Money didn't grow on trees and his squad's allotted supply funds never seemed to cover the want items like basic poisons that made transporting civilians or the injured easier, as carrying them while awake was dangerous if attacked and stasis scrolls were dangerous for non-shinobi as it linked to one's chakra, and civilians didn't have a developed network. Team Ro was lucky to not need to sedate anyone yet because a pack of three needles cost more than a full C-rank mission. Fine. I'll pay for ten plates of dango and you can sleep on my couch tonight. But I'll expect I'll be able to make that sleeping poison this week? He relented. When I'm through with you, you'll be completely immune to it and be able to whip it up and store in two minutes. Dango, here I come. And she charged towards her favorite dango shop, Naruto over her shoulder. Agent Mouse, reporting for patrol duty of the records tower. Naruto greeted his temporary commanding officer, Lizard, looking straight ahead into the dimly lit office. 
Lizard glanced at him and the papers Naruto handed him. So you're the brat dragon promised me for the week. What did you do to get dumped down here? Lizard drawled. It was obvious he was bored, the talk of HQ was that ten years ago the man was one of the top ANBU one of the division captains. But then he received a debilitating injury, ensuring he'd never be an active shinobi again. Problem was, he knew too many secrets and a lot of higher-ups wondered if letting him go would put the security of the village at risk. The council debated for days about having him killed, half-hearted, of course, but they were ninjas, or to just trust the man to never give out secrets or be kidnapped by another village for said secrets. The Compromise? Captain Lizard became the bookkeeper, the man who knew every single grain of dirt on Kanoha. He never had any family or real hobbies before, so he lived inside the complex, among the shadows of Kanoha's darker side. Nothing sir, I just needed the extra money for intermediate ceiling lessons, as an orphan any extra skills I want to learn I need to pay for. Oh? Ceiling is an obscure art, why would an ANBU wish to learn more than the basics? Lizard knew who Naruto was, heck, he was one of the ANBU that found Naruto laying next to Kushina's corpse and all of Naruto's records were kept in the basement. Dragon had suggested Naruto be given access to that level, about damn time in Lizard's humble opinion, but Naruto wouldn't know about his heritage until after he found the records unless someone introduced him to the art. My captain recommended it and I am picking it up at a relatively quick pace, I am almost finished with level 2 but the barrier between level 2 and 3 makes learning without a tutor unwise. I already littered our training ground with enough potholes. But why would you waste your money on more lessons? The basics are more than enough for an ANBU squad and I don't hear any desire to join the barrier core. The reason the boy wanted to know more was obviously because ceiling was in the Uzumaki blood, but that didn't mean Lizard couldn't mess with the brat, his day was monotonous and picking on youngsters always made his day brighter. Um. I guess I just like it. Naruto couldn't really explain it, ceiling was just enjoyable, even when his shock tags kept exploding. Lizard seemed to be unimpressed. Why not learn a more applicable skill? Naruto seemed to stiffen at this and Lizard smirked. Degrade an Uzumaki's ceiling and they lost it. He prepared for a heated rant or passionate demonstration. Every Uzumaki he ever met did it. Fuenjutsu would be valuable to the core if I can attain level 5 or higher, as then I would be qualified to maintain the security barrier and seals at HQ, thus cutting out the middleman and internalizing more of ANBU's procedures. Except this one. Lizard frowned, he should have known that Kill Joy Tenzo would feed that duty crap to his young charge. What Lizard didn't know was that Naruto, like any true Uzumaki, did in fact have a don't mock the seals rant prepared. But, like any good ANBU, one that was deathly afraid of their captain and other superior officers, Naruto bit his tongue and went down the path of not being punished for insubordination. TSCH. You're the only boring one I've met. Now get out of here, Trout is waiting for you on B-5 for your shift. Lizard waved Naruto away. Naruto bowed and left, confused at the last statement. The only boring one I've met? Most ANBU are boring though. He pushed those thoughts aside as he reached floor B-5. A brown-haired ANBU waits, his trout mask almost ghoulish in the fluorescent light. Agent Mouse, I am your commanding officer for the week, you can call me Captain Trout. It is an honor to work with you. Captain. Naruto's heart raced, so close was he to finding out about his past. Respect, good for one so young. Which squad do you come from? Team Ro, Captain. Hmm that explains it, Tenzo's team. Next time you see him remind that idiot he owes me 600 Rio, okay? Trout says offhandedly, like he really didn't care that Naruto's captain owed him so much money. Oh of course, sir. Best to go with the neutral. Route. Good, my little Kohai. He pats Naruto on the head, much to the blonde's hidden ire. Follow me, 
I'll teach you the ropes today and tomorrow you'll be assigned a sector to watch over. And with that, Naruto learned the ins and out of Kanoha's House of Secrets. That evening, Naruto trekked to Anko's playground, the Forest of Death, for his first poisons lesson, mainly how to properly gather the needed herbs and storing them to prevent spoilage long term. Gliding over the rooftops Naruto focused on the small notebook in his hands, where he was carefully mapping out his plan for the rest of the week. From his time with Captain Trout, he had deduced that each ANBU was given half a floor to patrol and report any trouble in, as well as sweep slash dust to keep the files clean, though Trout said the mice were an ongoing problem to not bother with. Naruto figured that he would focus on his actual job while pairs of clones transformed into mice would work their way down, from the least restricted section to the darkest village secrets files. Naruto wasn't stupid, reading his file could be excused, but digging into other files would result in having the QB extracted and put into another child, in other words, execution. So, the clones had orders to only open the boxes labeled Naruto Uzumaki, Kushina Uzumaki, and October 10th. Anything else was off limits. He could only hope that saved him if anyone ever figured out what he was doing. Arriving outside the tall, seal enforced fence, because no way would Kanoha have a simple playground grade fence to keep out the tigers, leeches, and whatever other mythical beasts that lived there, he flared his chakra and waited for Anko. He had to spend hours every week with his squad in the hell hole, no way would he go in there alone. Hey, Mouse Chan. Welcome to paradise. Anko's exuberant greeting came from behind him and a kunai was at his jugular. Naruto flinched despite himself. Big mistake. Oh ho, I can smell your fear. I like it, almost as much as I love your blood. A cut appears above his mask Anko licks the liquid off of her kunai. I paid your dango tab for help with poisons, not seduction lessons. Naruto said. Anko sniggered but released him. Ah, uh, is Little Mouse afraid of the big bad snake? Well anyway, let's go, the best species of poppy seeds and sleeping herbs are just up ahead. Anko jumped over the fence without a glance back and after an eye roll Naruto followed. Over the following three hours Naruto learned the ingredients for not just the sleeping drug, but also a paralyzing one. Anko insisted and found that the problem was what part of the plant he was gathering from, the top leaves led to death if not treated, while the flowers on the ground of the plant just sedated the victim. Now, Mausachan, it's time for your immunity training. Anko said happily. Naruto paled and backed away. No, no, that's okay. I have patrol tomorrow anyway. He tried to reason but Anko's grin. Turn viscous. And I know that shift isn't for sixteen hour, the dose I'm giving will knock you out for eight the first time. She sticks him with a sunbon as he attempts flight. Don't worry, before the week is up you'll be immune to three times that amount. Her cackle was Naruto's last remembrance of lucidity. Last day of patrol. Naruto Uzumaki born October 10th to Kushina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze. Naruto sucked in a breath at that last name the fourth Hokage was his father. He, the village scapegoat, was the son of their greatest hero. Oh, the irony. Blinking away tears the young ANBU reads on through the thick box that told him the truth, from his birth to the decision to enlist him in ANBU. This mess of emotions all started when Naruto's clone on his floor, ironically, discovered the file box Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The clone was confused over if reading it was allowed, the name Namikaze meant somehow Naruto was linked to the man who sealed the Kyubi, but was it just notes over the seal? And if it was something else, what was it? Dispelling its partner the clone waited patiently, and when its creator arrived in a measured step it too dispelled, leaving the identity searching boy to himself. Within an hour Naruto was livid, he had a godfather, the Sanin, Jiraiya, who had refused to see or have anything to do with him. In Jiraiya's notes to the Hokage, Naruto reminded him too much of a broken past, and he trusted his sensei to raise the boy as his own. 
Problem was, the council declared Naruto a military asset at the age of two, meaning no one could adopt him, not even an old student of his father, Kakashi, or his father's old guard members that explained Genma offering Senban lessons for free. It was ridiculous, from what Naruto read within the file, he was deemed too valuable to be entrusted to one person or clan, but the reports showed that Jinchuriki needed to be filled with love in their lives to keep them loyal. That led to the Hokage befriending him at a young age, the notes from that section mentioned it was originally to build loyalty to the Hokage, but bloomed into actual like of Naruto, and Naruto entering the academy early at the age of six in the hopes of early graduation. His real academy scores had been added, and the investigation that followed, leading to three teachers being fired and two being dropped from active duty. Naruto felt a vindictive pleasure at that, but it turned to bitterness, as he recalled all the times Naruto would swear up and down that he did hit the target and get a 10 out of 10, or that his math test wasn't an F, only to have his GG ignore him or tell him to just show them kindness when he cried that the taijutsu instructors hit him harder than the others. A subtle sabotage swept under the rug, as the official reports just fabricated the need for a new staff or minor infractions that built up for the reason that the teachers were fired. The only good part of his findings was a picture of his parents and him, in the belly, but they were still together. Carefully, Naruto sealed the picture inside a scroll and placed the box back exactly the way it was before. He wiped his tears, knowing that no matter how much he wanted to, he couldn't storm into the Hokage's office and demand answers, or track down his godfather to beat him up, or even yell at Kakashi, who was his father's prized student. He had to make a believable reason to how he figured it out, as it was clear nobody wanted him to know their reasons, according to the last report from a month ago was IWA and Kyumo coming after him. But Naruto read the real reason that was spelled out among the good intentions, his stability and loyalty weren't unshakable now, and until he proved to be properly stable and loyal to Konoha and the Hokage he was to be kept in the dark despite his maturity and rank. Naruto considered waiting until the Hokage made the first move towards reconciliation. Is my pride worth it? He wondered, and came up with the obvious no. His stupid stubbornness was not worth hindering both his career or his knowledge. Time begin to mend the fence, he decided. After he was officially in the know of his past he'd have plenty of time to beat the crap out of his former Gigi. Besides, he did miss the man, despite everything. Hokage's office, after shift. Naruto breathed deeply before knocking. Come in. The familiar aged voice spoke. Naruto opened the door hesitantly. Ah, Naruto my boy. Do you need anything? Saratobi was guarded, but hopeful. Naruto only showed up in his presence for the guard rotation and that one mission report both had been awkward, as Saratobi knew the boy was hiding his bitterness. It was the only reason he kept Naruto's legacy a secret from him, despite his commander's rather vocal protests. A Jinchuriki that wasn't all the way trusting of its Hokage couldn't be given more reasons to be angry. Once Naruto forgave him and calmed down he'd take him aside and explain why it was for his own good, Kyumo and IWA were large threats and that his godfather was always out protecting the village from spies. Even if it was partially bull crap, the reasoning was sound and believable. Please forgive me Naruto. Perhaps some bonding time would work? On the matter of letting Naruto decide Sarutobi was waiting for Naruto make the first move, maybe he should just bite the kunai and do it himself. He wasn't just worried for his position, though a few sharks had started circling when they figured out he and the village Jinchuriki weren't as chummy as before, Naruto had become a second grandson to him, and he'd be damned if he let the boy stay sullen. Oh. I was just wondering. Would you like to go get some ramen? If you're not busy, I mean. Naruto turned away to hide his slight blush. The ANBU posted, Gama Squad, according to the roster, breathed a sigh of relief. Many ANBU were tired of their new Kohai and their esteemed leader. Not speaking to each other. Most quietly agreed the Hokage should have made the effort first, but were proud Naruto took the initiative, demonstrating loyalty and honor. 
Of course. Let me grab my wallet, my treat, all you can eat? He smiled in amusement when Naruto lit up at the offer and nodded. Thank you, Hokage-sama, Naruto blurted out. He may have to bite down his pride and let his anger go mostly, at least dash, but he would never call him, Gigi, again, both for the principal and to escape his captain's wrath. You don't have to be so formal, Naruto, even though you're my ANBU, outside of duty we can be familiar with one another, the Hokage bit out painfully. The man wanted Naruto to be like he used to be, minus the extreme loudness. I can't, Hokage-sama, Saratobi raised his eyebrow at this. Oh? And why not? All the ANBU, Naruto included, grew cold, and Captain Hawk answers. He's on row, Tenzo's squad, he said like that, answered everything. All the ANBU nodded along, but Saratobi was still confused. Why would it matter to be on Tenzo's squad? He's formal, but what does that matter to Naruto? If he found out I didn't show you proper respect and he always finds out, then all my ramen would be burned and I'd spend a week being chased by leeches and wood spikes, Naruto shivered. Tenzo made it obvious that calling superiors by nicknames would be dot unwise. Just ask Hikaru what happened when he called the Jonin commander, Pinapple Sama, during a debriefing last year. I see, Sarutobi said, understanding completely, a captain could punish their subordinates for breaking of any rules, and technically, it was against the rules to refer to those in the higher echelons without proper titles. Minutes later the Hokage, Naruto, and the other ANBU were sitting in Ichiraku's waiting for the heavenly broth, the squad being rewarded for stopping Kanoamaru from bothering the Hokage all day. So, brat, what have you been up to on your week off? Raven asked. Squad Gama consisted of Hawk, Raven, Elk, and Lemur, and were oftentimes teamed up with Ro for duty in group practice, making them familiar enough with Naruto's schedule. I took the record's rotation, boring, but the paycheck was worth it, Naruto said after eating six bowels. At this they nod, a week of records rotation did pay nicely, but very few did it willingly as it was even worse punishment than watching Kanoamaru Saratobi at the academy. And Anko taught me two poisons, a sedative and a paralyzer, as well as beginner resistance to them. Most of the common ingredients for poisons were free for the taking in the forest of death or surrounding areas, but gathering said ingredients and mixing them properly was too difficult without instruction, even with a guide book allowing suppliers to overcharge shinobi. Hawk thought for a moment before speaking. Say, Naruto. Would you be willing to teach me those two poisons? My squad does a fair amount of retrieval and prisoner escorts. The pre-made ones always bankrupt us. Sarutobi frowned slightly at this obvious hardship to his shinobi as he listened, but didn't interrupt, wanting to see how Naruto interacted with his comrades. Sure, if you teach me two of those advanced trapping knots. Naruto wasn't running a charity, and the two he was talking about were perfect for anchoring wire or rope in high-speed wind conditions, and seeing as Naruto had a wind element or could travel to the land of wind, it was needed, but still be able to be activated with a touch of chakra to the lead string. Problem was, almost no one was adept at those knots and the book that contained this knowledge was pricey. But Hawk was the second best trapper in active ANBU, Naruto was sixth already according to the leaderboards and thus could do them in his sleep. Deal, Hawk said immediately. Kakashi won't be back from his mission by tomorrow we can start the lessons then? Naruto smirked and they shook hands, both drooling at the prospect of new abilities. Of course, even with those knots you'll still be years behind me, Hawk added and Naruto scowled slightly. I am pleased to see my ANBU squads work to make each other stronger to protect Kanoha, Sarutobi chuckled. Naruto gave a real grin from behind his face mask, and dug into his tenth miso ramen with gusto. For the next hour Naruto joked around and reconnected with the Hokage, the ANBU giving them space after eating their share. Tuchi and Ayam stole glances at the two, but withheld themselves from conversation to allow the much-needed bonding time to flourish. Two days later and Naruto was back for Ro's first practice in almost a week, 
his wallet stuffed and a weight off his shoulders, well, almost. He didn't trust his Kage on a personal level anymore. He'd die for him, defend his decisions for the village, and kill for him. Trust him to tell him the truth? Hell no. The last few months had allowed Naruto to come to the conclusion that while, despite everything, he didn't hate Hiruzen Sarutobi and could rationalize his choices for the sake of the village, didn't mean the man wasn't going to incur his wrath later dash, the Hokage seat was most definitely not for him, and that he personally hated what the position made someone become. His dream of protecting his precious people and getting a ninja cat was noble enough for him, thank you very much. I'm glad we're all here, I take it you two were productive? Tenzo asked, the ghoul face he was known for shining despite it being daylight. I did records rotation, learned two poisons paralyzing and sedative to save our team budget, and my clones can almost make a dent into the waterfall, Naruto reported. Yugao ruffled his hair. That's great, mouse. Those two will indeed save our wallets. I think you deserve some of my homemade brownies, everyone else paled at that, Yugao was just as deadly with the kitchen as she was with the sword. Naruto smiled weakly. Of course, senpai. I'd love some of. Your brownies, to dump in the garbage. I lounged around for the week and regret nothing, Hikaru said bluntly. Tenzo rubbed the bridge of his nose. Hikaru was normally a hard worker, but at times he resembled either a Nara or a hyperactive toddler. Well, Wolf, I'm truly glad you relaxed the whole time, Tenzo said, sounding the opposite. Today we'll be working on combination attacks and underground battle maneuvers as I noticed on my mission that most can't fight effectively in cramped passageways where Jutsu is unwise and many formations have to be altered. To fix that we'll be learning them today and then taking the sewer shift to practice. Naruto bit back a groan, the sewers had to be combed through every month to check for any activity or traces of intruders. Rarely did a captain request that particular job, and never was it done for training. Oh, and Wolf? Tenzo smiled placidly. Yes, Captain? I took the liberty of putting you in the corner for the next five office rotations, I hope you don't mind the extra training? Not at all, Captain. I live for it, Wolf replied dryly. Perhaps he should have lied and said he read the beginner medical scrolls he bought. No, the man has eyes everywhere. Three Tuesdays later, by monthly gambling night. Civilians and lower-ranked ninja unwind away from their teammates after spending hours of every day with each other. It was common for shinobi and civilians in some cases to lead two groups of friendship, the on-duty one where ninja would die for their teammates, and the off-duty acquaintances that never became more than skin deep. Once one reached jonin level, however, they realized sticking with those you would take a kunai for made for a much more relaxing downtime. Many jonin associated with only other jonin, ANBU, and the few up-and-coming chunin. It allowed them to vent about the scumbags on their last A-rank seduction mission or whine about the Hokage assigning a squad too many assassination missions in a month, causing the squad to contemplate whining like Jenin for something new. It was this comradeship that kept each one sane and voluntarily hanging out with their teams away from work more times than not. This was the scene ANBU squad row was participating in with others of their station. Naruto stared at his target with calculating eyes, who stared back at him through the dragon mask. Neither would give away anything with their faces, a true test of Naruto's luck was about to happen. He planned to clean his commander out, after catching him red-handed swiping his ramen and placing fresh vegetables in their spot. Pranking was forbidden and unwise as Dragon seemed to have a Naruto sense, but humiliation at the bi-monthly poker game? That, he could do. That, and if the gossip was right, his winnings would let him barter for something useful later. Something wrong, Mouse? Dragon asked coolly, hiding his mirth. Stealing Naruto's ramen after every shopping trip proved to be an excellent workout in avoiding traps. Now he could clean the boy out of his savings, and thus making him reliant on the approved supplies Dragon dropped off. It was foolproof. 
Too bad he never heard of Naruto's Uzumaki luck, and the other ANBU and Jonin hid their knowledge of the fact well. Even the Hokage had to hide his eagerness at Dragon getting his ass handed to him. The man had foolishly bet an eight-year-old Naruto he couldn't infiltrate T and I and swipe Ibiki's favorite torture chain. Two days later a dusty and tired Naruto set said chain on Sarutobi's paperwork and walked out while cackling. He learned his lesson. No, of course not Dragon-sama. Let's have some fun. Naruto smiled brightly, the cloth mask concealing its morphing into a smirk. Thirty hands later and Naruto was the proud owner of Dragon's most prized belonging, his limited edition collection of Ika Ika, all forty volumes. They had bet their most treasured objects after Dragon lost all his on-hand money, an A-rank mission's worth, and Dragon accepted, thinking his hand was good enough and he'd win both his money back and whatever was sealed in the scroll Naruto carried around for the past several weeks, he suspected it was something from Naruto's file, and he couldn't let him keep it for his own security. I give up, Dragon finally said, the pain evident in his voice. Nobody moved as he got up and left the room, too prideful to attempt a trade back. Three seconds passed before the room erupted. Yes. That's my chibi kohai. The only ANBU to beat Dragon at anything. That's right, bitches, Team Row rules. Hikaru boasted to the room, which everyone ignored. Naruto escaped the headlock Hikaru tried with practiced ease. Hmm, Aika Aika? Looks boring, Naruto said innocently as he flipped through it, pretending to not notice the spike of killing intent from Yugao and surprisingly Tenzo that died down as he threw them in a pile. Kakashi and Sarutobi gasped. If you do not wish to honor the sacredness that is Aika Aika Empire I would gladly take it off your hands, my cute little student, Kakashi said way too cheerfully. Sarutobi snarled at his subordinate for trying to steal his precious. Don't be silly, Kakashi, Naruto knows I would be the best choice to guard such a precious supply. The two men glared at each other. Sarutobi prepped to summon Enma while Kakashi inched his headband up. Everyone else in the room sweat dropped, and Hei ate prepared to play the part of Proctor if need be. Naruto, however, wasn't going to let that happen. I might be willing to trade for them. What do have? Naruto asked, in full bartering mode. At this point the jonin were slightly shocked at the prospect of a twelve-year-old trading the smut for something while the few ANBU just shook their heads, Naruto had started getting a reputation of trading other members for training, whether it be survival lessons or tactics or the occasional jutsu. Team Gama was a prime example as Hawk and Naruto had an ongoing account. Kakashi knew the drill and put his best deal forward. Give me those precious and I'll teach you both a D-rank jutsu for water, fire, earth, and lightning and buy you a chakra conductive chukoto, I know you've been eyeing one and that you wouldn't be able to afford it until after the exams, even with the pocket change there. Most in the room believed Naruto would agree instantly which he would have except the Hokage, whom he was back on civil terms with, interjected. Naruto, my surrogate grandson. Give me those books and not only will I double Kakashi's offer but that I will tell you your parents' identities, the room stiffened, Naruto's lineage wasn't hard to pinpoint, heck he looked like a clone of his father and now began to act like him too since Tenzo gained command of him. Oh. You mean Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki? Naruto said with a cocky smirk. Sarutobi and Kakashi face faulted while the others either broke out laughing or gaped. H. How did you know? My mother's name is on the memorial stone, Hokage sama, and as for my dad, he paused for dramatic effect. I didn't until you confirmed it. Naruto lied, covering up his borderline illegal searches. Sarutobi went bug-eyed at this, falling for it completely. To be honest, the Hokage was just using this obsessive bartering to tell Naruto his parents' identity. Kakashi knew, the other room members knew, and Naruto knew the Hokage had been chickening out from having a private heart-to-heart -heart on the matter. It was the only reason Naruto didn't go nuts on the man for his little ploy. Kakashi chuckled, 
remembering another blonde who had a flair for making higher-ups tell him what he wanted to know without lifting a finger. But you know Hokage-sama, I'll accept Kakashi-senpai's deal and you'll still be giving me everything you offered minus the information. Why would I do that? Sarutobi demanded, miffed at being outmaneuvered, and still peeved at himself for not being able to work himself up to have a private conversation with Naruto. Naruto inspected his nails. Oh, just because if you do I'll train you in the art of defeating paperwork. He pulled out his trump card, which he would have used soon to discover his parents' identities soon enough anyway, now it could be put towards more training. Sarutobi was at his side, bowing down. Please, teach me, Naruto-sensei. Very well, my young grasshopper. Shadow clones. Now you can train me after the Chunin exams. Kakashi-senpai I'll see you Sunday where we can learn a jutsu or two a week. I'll have the ANBU supply store put my weapons on your tab, now I can have a backup Chukoto. Oh, and don't worry, I forgive you, I will be pranking you non-stop after the Chunin exams, but I forgive you, as long as tomorrow I can talk to you privately about it. I have early office guarding, so Jayani. And he shunshined away before anyone could get a word in. Five minutes later Sarutobi smiles gently and then chuckles. He wants to talk tomorrow. And he forgave me. Maybe there is hope for me yet, even if I will have to go through his vindictive side of pranks first. Excuse me, I have paperwork to give to clones. And the god of shinobi follows his surrogate grandson's example, leaving behind a stunned crowd. Does anyone else feel inferior to the twelve-year we could all beat into next week with our hands tied behind our back? Gemma manages after a moment. Absolutely, was the unanimous reply. Hikaru felt the need to soothe their prides a tiny bit. If it makes you feel any better we'd have to fight him with only one hand restrained, he graduated from no hands last week. He joked. Somehow that made them feel worse. Naruto's apartment. Naruto lay awake, giddy but saddened by the night. On one hand he not only confirmed his parents' identities and set up the basis for any revenge pranks, but he got eight new jutsu in the making, being a jinchuriki had the perk of having enough chakra to perform a variety of jutsu from every element even those opposite in nature. On the other hand, he had expected a different scenario for his heritage reveal, something dot more heartfelt? At least he had a meeting tomorrow to talk to the Hokage about it in private. The last few months had been the highlight of Naruto's life. No one looked down on him except some older ANBU from the other squads, but Dragon put that to rest quickly during the first inter-squad training day. Tenzo told him last week how they were ordered to steer Naruto away from the village's eye while on the three-month grace period. Team Ro all looked guilty at that and believed Naruto would hold a grudge over it, he didn't. In fact, Naruto only snuck away to Ichiraku's occasionally now, much to Dragon's ire, who for some reason detested his habit. Otherwise, he shopped, ate, and hung out at the upper-level shinobi-only establishments, becoming a part of the older generation of shinobi circle, realizing it was overall better than his life before with civilians and younger shinobi. Many hardly gave him a second glance now after Hikaru had paraded Naruto around the hot spots two weeks after his enlistment. His life was just beginning to settle before tonight happened. Knock. Knock. Naruto, I know you're up. I'm coming in. Kakashi's muffled voice grows distinct as he works his way to Naruto's bedroom. Entering quietly the copy ninja takes in the slightly messy room and quarter-filled bookcase. On it were novels on everything from chakra control to a few comics. There was even a lone cookbook for Shinobi. I see you took up reading? He asked, a bit surprised. Naruto wasn't exactly the most studious ninja based on his academy records. For his part Naruto glared and in the moonlight it was terrifying to see those ice-blue eyes almost glow. I always liked to read, senpai, I just never had enough money to afford more than a couple before the yearly break-in on my birthday would destroy. Them. 
My academy grades were falsified I made A's and B's on every test for the last two years, but Mizuki graded for Irika. What went unsaid was him changing the papers out, and Kakashi winced at his own stupidity. It's okay, I know it will take years before people see me as more than a failure, and my prankster reputation didn't help things. Heh, you do have a larger vocabulary now than a few months ago, Kakashi commented. Naruto smiled slightly. Yeah, well that's Captain Tenzo, he doesn't tolerate row members being unrefined in speech, so he assigns vocabulary work, and, am I the only one that can viably see Tenzo's personality making him a speech Nazi? I feel the only reason he didn't beat manners and respect into Naruto was for plot continuity on Kishi's part, not that Hikaru does it. Both chuckle at the abnormal Hyuga and his ability to cause Tenzo headaches. The room then falls to an uncomfortable silence, and Naruto fidgets. Is there something you need or do you just like breaking into your neighbor's homes in the middle of the night? Kakashi sputtered. And no. I came here. To talk. Your father was my sensei and that's why I started teaching you, though now I do it because you are my favorite student, more so than my idiot team. It was true too. Kakashi often grumbled about the said three idiots at dinner. Oh. Did they dot did they love me? Naruto looked up with glistening eyes, asking the question he had wanted to ask for years but could never muster the courage to, the record's discovery made him even more curious. Kakashi scoffed. Love you? They adored you. In fact, when Sensei heard that Kushina was pregnant he fainted before using Hiroshin to announce it to all his close friends. There was one time. And stories passed by Kakashi's lips like a dam being released. Both shinobi found solace and closure with each word uttered until they found themselves clutching their sides from the great ramen chase that resulted in Minato proposing to Kushina at Ichiraku's. Ha! Huh. My dad knew how to pick them and, conversation stopped as Kakashi's ANBU tattoo pulsed with Naruto's. Village infiltrated. Eight alive perpetrators, attempted assassination of Hokage. Failed, but the survivors on the run. All active squads, Plan Delta. Retired and reserve, report to Hokage Tower. Naruto's blood chilled even as he unsealed his spare uniform and mask. After months of drills and mornings with Guy he was dressed in thirty seconds. Without a word Naruto leaps through his window and towards the Inazuka compound, Kakashi going the opposite direction to meet the reserve captains. Naruto lands in the meeting spot along with two other agents, an Aburame and Hikaru. Wolf, Lemur, he saluted. Without a word the three turned their attention to Tsum Inazuka, the ANBU's top search and retriever even in her middle age. Naruto was often included in the division simulations because of his clones and as such Tsum knew his abilities. Listen up. She. Barked. Eight ninjas wearing scratched headbands of Kiri escaped through the eastern forest after a failed ambush of Hokage-sama on his way home after a stroll, his guards were knocked unconscious. We managed to kill ten of them so these eight are the stragglers. Everyone, to your assigned teams for this, mouse, two hundred clones, three for each team and the rest as pursuers. Naruto complied, and two hundred puffs later the ANBU were off with the clones to pursue. Naruto sat down next to Hana, Tsum's daughter, who was on medical leave and had a headset connected to each captain. Meditating, Naruto waited for a clone to dispel with information, which he would then tell Hana to relay to the captains, as the radios couldn't handle it if everyone was talking at once not to mention they were ridiculously expensive dash, and the tattoos couldn't go as fast, and were used as a mass call mostly. Less than twenty minutes pass before a rush of memories hits Naruto. Hana. Five clicks northeast, blue squad, clone found the trail headed towards rice. Hana spoke rapidly into her mic and the ANBU began making their way towards Blue Squad. Good work Mouse. Shit, they found five, but the last three are missing. She curses before a kunai embeds into Naruto's shoulder. Hana grabs his collar and yanks him through the air to avoid an explosive note. 
A ninja with a slashed kiri headband lands opposite of them, holding an unconscious and beaten Sasuke Uchiha. The other two at his side stepped forward, ready for a fight. I think we found the missing three, Naruto commented dryly. Hannah glared. No dip, mutt. These three smell at least Chunin level two. Damn, the whole clan and ANBU are out, and my Ninkin joined in. Their backup at the tower was on their way but still six minutes out and the non-tracker ANBU were sweeping other, further away places of interest for sabotage or stragglers. We just have to hold them for six minutes I'm sure we can do it. Here is what I think will work, Captain taught me this strategy during Shogi, Naruto whispered. Hannah looked unsure as the insane idea based solely on assumptions and hoping was laid out in a matter of seconds. But, she told her rational side of her brain, they either went through with it or the two forming seals in front of her would kill them. As the two in front created a mist, Hannah Kawarimi's with a Naruto clone on the rooftop, who is henged to look like her. She waits for the opening, they'd have one shot to take them out. A little ANBU wants to play, eh? Kukuku. What point should I take? Heart, Larynx. So young and brave, too bad you have to die. The taller of the three cackles and his footsteps echo. For Naruto clones holding kunai search around the mist using scent and sound, not that it helped, and three are taken out quickly. The real Naruto ducks under a katana intent on lopping off his head with enough force to cut a wall. In the process Naruto nicks him with his own kunai in the leg. He smirks, and does the one thing Tenzo always griped about, he talked to an opponent in a fight. Ha, hey, you're not so tough, I've had villagers hit harder than you. I recognize you from the bingo book, Ryano, aka the mist's one fang dragon for your abilities in kenjutsu. A B class, I believe, but that last attack felt more like a genin swatting a training post on an empty stomach. The newly identified Rai fell for it hook line and sinker, roaring in frustration. Naruto easily weaves in and out at the close-range ragged attacks that had a basic pattern. He was less adept than Yugao at the art and Naruto got in two other jabs, this time in the arms as he launched himself above using Rai's sword as a springboard. From what he remembered from the bingo book tournament that ANBU hosted every month the captain's way of keeping everyone up to date, Rai was quick to anger and not very bright, his only skill was brutal assaults and the hidden mist jutsu, not anything that required a lot of brain power. Rai looked confused as he felt his body going stiff, before not being able to move at all. Bingo, Naruto says before a clone slices his throat from behind. Naruto goes through a few seals, releasing a, wind-style, great breakthrough. The already weakening mist is blown away completely, allowing Hana her shot. Gitsuga, even without her partners her drill attack hits the second one easily as a clone had sliced his hand before being expelled, and he was under the short-term paralysis. The third one looks slightly nervous as he held the Uchiha. D don't come any closer or I'll slit his throat. I swear I'll do it. Let me go and I'll, his eyes widen and he screams as a Chidori is slammed through his chest. A murderous looking Kakashi appears from behind, snatching his student away. Without a glance he's off to take Sasuke to the hospital. Several of the reserve and active ANBU surround Hana and her kill, while Dragon and Tenzo land in front of Naruto, who was winding down from the adrenaline. Mouse, report, Dragon commands, snapping Naruto back to the situation. After we relayed my clone's findings, it became clear that there were three missing from the group, when a kunai hit my shoulder, here Naruto winced at the memory. A medic wordlessly healed the wound that was rapidly closing on its own. Hannah prevented me from potential injury from an explosive note. The enemy, who were holding Sasuke Uchiha hostage, created a mist and tried that silent killing thing Kakashi Senpai told me about after his wave mission anyway, Hana waited on the roof while I got both fighters, the third hung back, with kunai soaked in the paralyzing poison. It worked, and I was able to distract Rai from the poison until it took effect and killed him, Hana got hers as well after I blew the mist away, while Kakashi Senpai took out the third member, 
taking Sasuke to the hospital, I believe. While that worked fine, I remember that strategy being a group effort, not a solo. 1. Mouse. If they had an immunity to the paralysis or were intelligent, then we would have died. I know, Captain. But they were from water, this variation I used is native to fire, and as such I took a gamble, otherwise a full-on battle wouldn't have worked, I would have had to resort to Kenjutsu, some ninjutsu, and shadow clones, one Rai was better at and the other too weak on strategy or easy to dodge. Naruto tilted his head defiantly at his captain, it was the best plan he could think of as Hana was on injury leave and Naruto wasn't fully equipped or with his team. Tenzo sighed after a moment and Dragon nodded. You did well, Mouse, even if you did rely on a huge gamble. We'll work on strategies at the next team dinner so you won't have to resort to such an iffy plan again, okay? Tenzo left after giving Naruto a final once-over. Dragon chuckles a bit. He cares for you, was frantic the entire run over here. You are on standard medical leave for two days, be at HQ at 10am for personal training. I'll work with you until your meeting with the Hokage. And Dragon leaves to find where the mole was, leaving a trembling Naruto behind him. Dragon was a patient man, he liked to believe. But now was not the time to play the board with deliberation and waiting around 22 shinobi, all defectors from mist, staged a fake attack on the Hokage and bombed a few other buildings of note, all for the sake of stealing a high-value target, the last loyal Uchiha. Worse, they were headed towards Rice, where Jiraiya's spy network and his men reported a new hidden village, one that coveted missing ninja and bloodlines. Dragon knew he was not seeing something, a final piece, as such a small village wouldn't normally attempt the ire of the strongest of the five. In exasperation he storms to the T&I, where one survivor was hanging on to life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.